things, uh, $99, shop.com.ai, and they convert your car and computer interfaces. Pandas have USB and Wi-Fi. Computers have USB and Wi-Fi. Phones, their computers, they also have USB and Wi-Fi. Um, Panda pairs with Schiffer. So Schiffer is our dash cam app. And it will also charge your phone. That USB port is a high current phone charger. It charges your phone really fast. You can get all these cool statistics about your car. Think of it like a fancy Fitbit for your car. Um, revs, engine temperature, fuel. But you can get things that no other dongle can get also, like steering angle and individual wheel speeds. Panda is logging every message that's on your car's CAN bus. That's the phone version. On the computer, we've built a tool called Cabana. It's kind of like Canalyzer, but web-based and modern. Um, so these are, on the side here, all the messages being sent in your car. You can load up a DBC file. Uh, we've reverse engineered a lot of the cars in another open source project, Comma AI Open DBC, available on our GitHub. Cabana also lets you create DBC files for your car. You can draw plots right up next to the video, and uh, pandas are pretty cool. We've also, um, we shipped a lot of these. We shipped, you ever ship 2,000 or something? You ever like put 2,000 or something in envelopes? And uh, so we're, we're making another run of 10,000 pandas, uh, and we're going to have them drop ship directly to Amazon. We'll have our manufacturer deal with all of that. Self driving is a journey. What we just announced about two weeks ago is the Eon. And the Eon is great universal computing hardware. So now we have an interface and we have universal computing. For sale at shop.com.ai, $699. Um, it's a phone in a case, but it's a nice case. Um, one of the problems with just using a phone is self-driving software or fancy dash cam software draws a lot of power. Uh, OpenPilot draws about seven and a half, eight watts. So this cooling solution is good for up to 12. Um, it ships with Schiffer Plus, which is a dash cam and infotainment system uh, replacement. And for music, we use Spotify. For nav, we use Waze. Because it's built on Android, we can just run the apps. You can also, it's also a developer kit, so you can SSH in, edit the software, run whatever software you'd like, including some aforementioned open source software that drives your car. I mean, maybe, maybe you can run that. It doesn't come with it. It doesn't, it's not designed to drive your car. Um, Self-driving is a journey. Open pilot. For free, on GitHub, now in version 0.3.8.2. Uh, we come out with a new version about every month. Wouldn't it be nice if your car had new software on it every month? And that's the thing, and that's the thing, and that's the reason that car manufacturers are, are going to lose and we're going to win. You know, you look at me like, how are we going to win self-driving cars? Well, it's because they don't update. It's because they don't understand software. It's because for them, adaptive cruise control is a box that you can just check off. But what about the feel? What about good adaptive cruise control that smoothly brakes and bad that when someone cuts in, it slams on the brakes real hard? You don't want that. You want it to feel nice and human. So add OpenPilot and your car drives itself. We support select Hondas and Toyotas. Uh, we support six of the top 10 cars sold in America. The software is open source. So there's been open source ports for Chevys and Teslas. Um, <laughs> There's going to be a bunch more soon as well, and you can do it. We have a bounty program where we're rewarding people who port our software to more cars. Open Pilot. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's let's see a little video, all right?
also free software, open source. Tesla Autopilot is to iOS as Comma AI Open Pilot is to Android. Tesla owns the vertical. They build hardware. They integrate software with it. All the other cars need great self-driving software as well. And it's not going to come from the car manufacturers. In fact, the car manufacturers that are the furthest along today, the ones who have the best shot who think they have the best shot in autonomy, maybe the Mercedes and the Fords, are going to lose the hardest. You know why I know this? Because the companies that were the furthest along in the smartphone race in 2006, Nokia and Blackberry, are dead. <laughs> who won smartphones? Well, there's Apple, right? That's Tesla. But who else won? Samsung, LG. These companies that were making atrocious flip phones in 2006. So my prediction now is down with Ford, down with Mercedes. Watch as Kia and Hyundai embrace the future and ship Open Pilot on their cars or ship systems like that. These companies can't build software. Tesla can. Tesla gets it. OTA. When is GM going to have OTA on their cars? Who knows? Tesla Autopilot is to iOS as Common AI Open Pilot is to Android. We want to be the Android of self-driving cars. There's already hundreds of Open Pilot users today. Unlike Waymo and Cruise, who post videos from their video production team, go look for Common AI Open Pilot on YouTube, and you'll find, you know, we have we have about 150 users and maybe 15 of them have posted videos of Open Pilot working, and it works just as well as I showed you in that video. This system is real. And every single user of our system is beaming data back to the mothership. They are all teaching us how to drive. These white X's are places where the driver needed to intervene. It's mistakes that our car made. It's a level two system. You have to pay attention at all times. But every time the car makes a mistake, you learn. We learn, we put it into our machine learning algorithms, and the system gets a bit smarter. And then we ship out a new update, and the system makes less mistakes, and we'll get all those mistakes back too, and then we'll ship a new update, and the system will get a bit smarter. We will win self-driving cars, and I'll tell you why. I don't understand a lot of companies today. They seem to have lost their way. I'm not exactly sure what they want. They're tracking KPIs and metrics, and weird stuff about users that I'll never understand. I want to win. I want to solve this problem. Self-driving cars are one of the coolest puzzles of today. I don't want to solve it. The hoodie is for sale at shop.com.ai for uh, way too much money. Thanks, George. That was uh, fascinating. We've got five minutes, and there's a couple of questions. We may have time for one or two from the audience. First of all, though, George, you, you showed us a map of interventions. We looked at open pilots. Um, AI is an important component of the word, or the title, comma, AI. When does it become really important? And, and maybe that's machine learning rather than the AI. When does all of the information that you're gathering from users, when do you reach critical mass? when you start almost settling down with autopilot and how reliable it is? We're already using it. Um, what our users are doing every time they correct the car is they're training our system. It's reinforcement learning on the world. Uh, AI is largely used today as a buzzword. I'm not really sure what it means, but we are using cutting edge machine learning technology. You saw my segments and depth nets on an earlier slide. It's already very important. And in 2018, we want to make that map empty. We want, to, we want to drive down disengagements to zero. So, um, right now you're talking about hundreds of users. You've shipped 2,000 uh, eons. Um, when do you think you're going to get to the point where uh, the data you collect and analyze, when will you get excited by, by the stuff you can get from it? Well, we ship 2,000 pandas, not exactly 2,000 eons. Okay. Um, but, uh, oh, so it's very exciting. 
Yeah. Oh, 3.5 million kilometers is like years and years and years of driving. Driving. Um, we, we're, it's, 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 we, we have so much data already. But what's really interesting about the data we get from OpenPilot it, it, is it isn't just driving data. It's mistakes that our system yeah. made and we can learn. It's reinforcement learning on the world. And you mentioned about the open source nature of, uh, of your software. Um, and so Panda and Eon and Open, you know, when you combine that, the potential for people in the audience, for people at home, to build something. What have you seen so far? And have you been excited by what people have said, this is what we've done? with comma AI stuff. Some of, the, some of the coolest stuff we got was the ports to the different cars. People have taken our stuff, understood it so well that they were able to make it work on their unsupported car. Um, you know, that's just testament to, you know you're doing well on an open source project when you're getting meaningful contributions from people. And do they tell you about it? Do they, yeah. Pull requests on GitHub. Pull requests on GitHub. It's the best way to have a conversation. Okay. You know, it's not business development. It's yeah. not like sketchy backroom deals. It's <laughs> open. No, but it's true. Yeah. It's open on GitHub. And this is so powerful to solve the problem. Yeah. Not even from an ideological perspective, but actually to solve the problem, to get these things built as quick as possible, and to make a lot of money. Yeah. And so when, um, what markets do you find? Uh, is it US, outside of America? How, how are people adapting? We have a few. We have a few Open Pilot users. About ten percent of our Open Pilot users are are outside of America. A lot of them in Europe, um, outside of U.S. and Canada. But most of them are ninety percent are U.S. and Canada. So um, I know, obviously, you're here in Portugal, and I, I think you're going to Asia shortly. Um, is that where? the market is bringing you? Is it the volume of people on the road? Is it cars? What's bringing you? Here's the thing. We don't market to you. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm anti-advertising like advertising like that. We put this out there, and if you find it cool, get involved. Okay, yeah. And so, um, when, you, when you visit, you know, when you come to a country uh, like Portugal and, uh, and on, um, people come up to you, and I know you talk about the GitHub uh, um, activity. Um, People talk to you about your products. Do they do they tell you what they need as drivers? Do they tell you what they need? Or when, what do what they? Steve Jobs is this great thing where he's like, we don't ask the users what they want. We tell the users tell what they want. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we're, we're building you. If you're happy with the adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist system, you're, you don't even like understand what's possible and what's actually really easy and available today. I know we don't have a whole lot of time yet. One thing I have to ask you is, where does Comma AI belong in three years' time? Do you belong, and I'm not asking you about acquisition, but do you belong as part of a manufacturer, as part in the software business? Where do, where do you think? I'm thinking about where Android is in the phone business. That's, that's where I want to be with OpenPilot. Uh, you're happy to be the platform on which... Yeah, kind of like the, the self-driving, the software that's across all of the, all of the hardware, right? Yeah. Just as like, you know, Samsung phones and LG phones and Motorola phones all run Android. We want to be Hondas, Toyota, Chevys, all run OpenPilot. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fascinating as ever, uh, George Hutz, Comma AI. Thanks, George. Thank you.